Weird Sauce. Oh, yeah. Let's get sauce. Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to the Weird Sauce Show. It's your host and mad scientist, Fratzuki, right here with my lab assistant, Mr. J. Stevens. Us boys fucking crazy. That's right. We are getting crazy on this one. It's going to be a weird and a wild one. Oh, yeah. I hope you're ready. Uh, for everybody that's back and watched episode one, thanks for being back here with us. Uh, for everybody that's new with us, welcome to the Weird Sauce Show. Uh, I'm your host, Fratzuki. This is Jay Stevens, and this is how we do it. Yes, sir. Uh, if you're new watching, don't forget, if you're watching at home, you're watching the show. You can try to spot something different in the episode as it's going. Something will change within the episode. If you're the first one to spot it, drop it down in the comments and be entered into our big grand prize drawing for episode 100. Uh, if you don't want to do that and you still want to get involved, you can also enter into our membership uh, system. I'm going to tell you about that later on in the show. All you got to do is hit us up and you'll be entered every day. But before we do that, um, I got a nice little story for y'all to open this episode up. Yeah, I'm excited to hear it. Oh, and here's our production assistant right here, Zamora. She has entered onto the set. Hello. She's been sleeping for quite a while, so. That's right. She's checking out the set. So uh, we're going to let her do her thing while I give the uh, story. Yes, sir. All right. So we're going to start this episode off, and we're going to kind of be talking about something weird called the hum. Yeah. All right. Now, the hum is this sound that's heard worldwide. It's like a low, deep, bassy sound, and uh, people have reported hearing it all over the world. Now, I actually happen to be one of those people, and I want to share that story with you today. Yes, sir. Okay, so... Uh, maybe about 10 years ago, I want to say, uh, I went to Cambodia and uh, you go out there to Angkor Wat. They have all the great, magnificent temples out there and you got to see it. Beautiful, beautiful You've never place. been. Yeah, you, you got to go. Exactly. You got to go. Uh, so I did. I did take that advice and I went. And so one of my objectives while I was there was I wanted to sneak into the temple at night. I had this super high powered laser and I was going to climb up to the top of the pyramid shoot the laser, do some meditation, conjure up some energy, see what was going on there because you got these massive pyramids and uh, it's in Cambodia, seemed very magical and it seemed uh, like something that I wanted to experience firsthand. So while I was out there, um, oh, if you can't see this right now, we got our production assistant Zamora climbing all over the desk. Yes, she is. There we go. All right. Okay, there we go. Get you get on, girl. All right. Back to the story. Sorry about that. Okay, so I went to Cambodia, and I'm trying to find a ride out there to these pyramids, right? right. So I find this guy, and I said, hey, man, I want you to drive me out to the pyramids. And he said, no, oh, man, you can't go out there. It's closed. And I said, um, yeah, I know it's closed, but it's just wide open. You can go out there, and you can walk around. I was how like, much I'm... money does it cost to go? Exactly. Is it, how closed is it, bro? Exactly. If, I mean, you can get shit done in Cambodia if you want to get shit done. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so... There's and that. so, as you were saying, there was a price. I said, look, dude, bring me out there. He said, all right. And I said, look, here's what I want to do. I want to go out there. I'm going into the pyramid. You're going to wait for me outside for like an hour, and then I'm coming out. So he agrees to this when we're in the city. So we drive out there, and right when we get out there, it's pitch dark, man. There is no uh, moon out that night. It's just absolutely pitch black. No moon. Uh, no stars, anything, maybe cloud cover, but it was a pretty eerie feeling night. Sure, so sure. we get out there and the guy says, all right, come on. Like, here, I brought you out here. Let's go. Let's go. And I said, hell no, bro. I was like, we just got out here. I told you you're going to wait for me for like an hour and then I'm going to come out. And he's like, this guy was genuinely scared. And this, when I got out to the temples is when I started to hear this hum. I couldn't hear it in the city, but we were out there. It's pitch dark. We just have his little motorbike. There's no street lights anywhere out there. Right. So you're in the dark. Um, this guy's like, yo, let's go. We got to go right now. He was scared shitless, like genuinely. Sure. You know, young 20 I mean, the place, kid. And also the place is, I mean, I can imagine at night like that. It's pretty fucking eerie. Oh, yeah. You know, it's, I mean, this place is massive. If you know nothing about it, which is old, you know, broken down temples and shit like that. So, yeah. And uh, so I was like, yo, dude, what the hell? And But that I did hear this hum, and it was very eerie and mysterious. So it was, like I said, it's a very low, bassy-sounding, constant hum. It doesn't fluctuate in vibration. It's just like a hmm. Yep. But it's a noticeable sound. You can hear it, right? Um, so this dude's scared shitless. He brings me back to the city. I'm still not fulfilled for my mission, right? So yeah. I grab another group of kids, and I said, hey, man. 
this is what I want to do. You're going to go out there. You have to wait for me. He's like, all right, man, no problem. I'll wait for you. So he tells a couple of his other homies waiting with him, yo, man, you guys want to ride out with us? This guy wants me to take him out to the temple. So me, my driver, a few of his homies all pile, uh, pile up together. We head out there with about five or six motorbikes. Same exact thing, dude. We get out there. It's all these like young 20 year old kids, you know? Yeah. And right when I get out there, they're like, uh, so what are you doing out here? When are you gonna wanna leave? And I was like, dude, I told you, you just wait right here if your friends wanna go, but you can't leave me. Yeah, if can't you, leave me here, bro. I, Cause where the temples are in the city, like you're way outside. Yeah, it's in Siem Reap, right? Outside of Siem Reap? Yeah. Yeah, so Siem Reap's like a, a pretty touristy kind of town area. And yeah, Angkor Wat, you gotta, you gotta go out there a little ways. Yeah, so. These other friends, they start flipping out and start yeah. going, hell no, we're out of here, dude. So they leave. And I looked at this dude. I was like, what is going on, man? I was like, why can't you stay here? What are you so scared about? And he was like, we have to go. We just can't be here. And I was like, what do you mean we can't be here? You know, we had we did have the language barrier thing going yeah. on, but he was very adamant going, no, 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 this, uh, no good. Uh, we need to leave. Uh, we must go now. Come on. I'm. If you don't come with me, I'm leaving you here. And I was like... Hell no, you're not leaving me here, bro. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so all of these kids were genuinely scared. I couldn't get to the bottom of what it was, but there was no other people out there at night. Um, the two groups of people I brought out there were genuinely scared about it. And like I said, there was this mysterious low-frequency hum coming out. So that was pretty cool. I didn't get my laser experience in the temple yeah. at night, but what I did do is uh, I was there in the daytime they start kicking everybody out, I think at like 4.30 or something. Yeah. And they start saying, hey, everybody's got to go. And I was like, oh, the sunset's about to come. Can I just stay? Can I go up to the top temple? Security guard's like, you got to give me a little bit of money. Again, and I always said, a price. Okay, all right, well, what do you want? Now, Cambodia, for those of you who don't know, they use the American dollar yeah. um, because their currency was just so whack and, and they unstable. Use, they use both, but it's like the Cambodian currency is worth nothing. Right. So, so the guy USD. looks at me and he says, uh, yeah, you got to give me a uh, $5 and I'll let you up to the top of the temple. And I was like, that's all I was expecting him to say 20. I would have dropped the 20. On. If he had gone anything bucks. over 20, I don't think I would have been down for it. But uh, he said, give me five bucks. I'll let you up there. Gave the security guard five bucks. I go running up these stairs. I had the entire King's chamber of the main temple in Acre Wat all to myself for the sunset, sat on the top step, just sat there, watched the sun go down. You could see all the people leaving, but I just sat up there. Maybe 10, 15 minutes later, another guy came up, another foreigner with his tour guide. Yeah, he probably paid 10 bucks, though. That's right. Yeah, fucking schmuck. That's right, schmuck. Yeah. But it was an amazing experience. I mean, the place is incredible. Besides, you know, the hum story, I mean, that's just a bizarre story. And like, But if you can get out to Angkor Wat... Get out to Cambodia. The place is incredible. Yeah, so the hum. Um, we started looking into it as well, and that's going to be the topic of our first discussion. Yeah. Um, the hum, what is it? Now, I'm not the only one that has, that has heard it. We've heard reports and we've seen stories about people all over the world hearing it. It does seem to be the same thing, and it doesn't seem to have an origin. Nobody can figure out where it's coming from. Now, there has been a few times uh, recorded that people have looked into it and they've come up empty-handed, all right? Uh, one of these was an episode on Zug Island in Michigan in the U.S. Uh, the people across the border over in Canada, our friends over there, yep. they were complaining that this hum was coming from this factory on the island, all right? It was making all this noise, creating this hum, and it was just driving people crazy, right? right? Yeah, yeah. So... They tried to look into it, but since it was two different countries, uh, it was a lot of regulation and bureaucracy going on, so they couldn't look into it. Never found out if that was the cause of it, but when they did look into it, nothing led them to believe that that was the cause of the hum. Well, no, I think that they still think that it was part of the hum. They've never been able to... The U.S. or the Michigan or whoever decided that the Canadian researchers could go in there, like, never let them in. So maybe that was actually what it was, and they didn't want to, you know, admit to causing this frequency or this noise. Right. So, and, I mean, it just in this particular instance, right? Like, why would you not let them come in there and look at it unless you were doing something that you maybe aren't supposed to be doing? 
Right. Um, but when you break it down, like, does factory equipment make that much noise? No, no. such a massive hum no. that it's shooting miles across the river. And I don't, yeah, I don't think so. Like, making people so. pissed off. Like, there's been other reports of this, too, to where, like, the entire community is reporting of it. People are recording getting sick because of it. The police are hearing it. All the government officials. Nobody can figure out where it's coming from. Uh, the local news are reporting on it. So it's a real thing. It's not, um, you know, some sort of thing that has no credibility to it. I think they were saying like 2% of people. Yeah. Yeah, I think 2% of people have heard it. So, yeah, they, I mean, like, I mean, it's not a huge number, but still, like, how many people are out there? Like, 2%, like, not everyone can just be fucking crazy. Right. So, like, I mean. Are you talking about uh, that's at least 100 million people or something? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, it's like, you know. Exactly. It's out there. Yeah. And I'm telling you, I've heard it. I have not. Um, who else has looked into it? They had in Taos, New Mexico, uh, some scientists looked into it with some uh, technological high-class equipment. They found nothing. Um, people have suggested maybe it's tinnitus. People are hearing this ringing. If you don't know what tinnitus is, it's a constant ringing in the ear. Uh, it's something that some people have. You can't knock it. It's just a constant ringing. That's more of a high pitch, constant high pitch sound. This hum is more of like a low, yeah. bassy frequency. And, di okay? and didn't they have some, something like at least semi recently? They were talking about like vibrations on the ocean floor could potentially be causing it. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of shit out there that you know people have theories about. What it was was um, there's a certain type of fish that its mating call yeah, is yeah. this low vibration right, that it goes right. on the ocean floor and it makes vibrates this vibra off the ocean floor. Yeah, it makes this vibration to kind of lure in the females, right? Right. And uh, they're saying if like the entire bay is filled with these things and they're all doing it at the same time, it could essentially... Yeah, but for how, fu like how fucking big, right? Like if, if that's happening, let's say off the coast of California, are you going to be hearing that same hum Right. In in the middle of fucking Cambodia? Right. Probably not. Right. Well, this is, you know, people trying to make sense of something no, that's sure. got no Ab sense. Absolutely. So they're going, well, there must be a logical uh, explanation, right. but they're not finding anything. Um, and there just hasn't been, there just hasn't been an answer. Right. So, you know, there, there might be a logical reason out there, just hasn't been found. Right. Yeah. Um... Also, just on that note, uh, an act there is a natural hum of the earth. It's called the Schumann Resonance. It is at about 7.83 hertz. It's a constant hum that comes off the earth. Uh, you can't hear it. It's way too low for the human ear to pick up on. But they have measured it. That's called the Schumann Resonance. It's not that either. Um, Nobody knows what it is. It's a mysterious. It's a mysterious thing. It's a mystery. If you've heard the hum and you got any personal experience, drop it down in the comments for us. Let us know. If you're liking the video and you want to help us out and see more of it, drop a like on this video as well. And we're gonna have some more content for you every day this week. Yeah, we'd love to hear your guys' uh, experience with the hum as well. All right. So now, while we're on the topic of hums and making noises and stuff like that, there was recently a animal that uh, decided to show itself to the world this year and make a lot of humming. Oh, yeah. And if you've been uh, following the news, you know what it is. It's the uh, cicadas. I mean, especially in America, man. Exactly. Especially in America. The cicadas have taken America and the world over this year. So a um, little bit of info about the cicadas is we were a little bit unsure about this, too. Now it's a little bit clearer for yeah, us. Yeah, yeah. We're going to shed some light on it for you. Yeah. Um, you got two types of cicadas. You got the annual ones that come out annually, and you got the periodical ones that come out uh, every 13 to 17 years. 13 and 17 years. Oh, 13 and 17 yes, correct, years. Correct, okay. correct, correct. So this year's species was called the Brood X. Uh, they come out every 17 correct. years. This was their time. Yep. Okay, now what happens is uh, these cicadas come out, and... Um, yeah, they go, they go hard. They live fast. They live hard. They go hard, and they're only doing their thing for about six weeks. Yep. Um, yeah, they stay underground. They grow. They're getting ready for their big coming out party. They're underground for 17 years, and then boom, they come out, and they are out partying for about four to six weeks, going on a massive uh, sexcation. I think a, they call it a fuck fest, right? Yeah, it's just a full-on yeah, fuck just, fest. Yeah, they just be fucking. Spread that seed, all yeah, right? Yeah, that's exactly what they do. Now, you know, humans, we like to shake our ass a little bit, right? Twerk, you know, twerk, a little twerk, twerky, twerk, 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 twerk. 
These cicadas, they have something called timbles, all right? Timbles are kind of like a uh, part of their little exoskeleton. Yeah, it's near their abdomen. Yes, uh, right abdomen. up under the wing. Now, it's the part of the body that insects use to vibrate that make the noises. So if you hear insects that are making different noises, locusts, cicadas, yeah. uh, different bugs and stuff while you're taking your nightly walk, these are created by these things called timbles. Now, the cicadas... Uh, they vibrate depending on the species from about 120 to 480 times per second. Yeah. Okay. Now this shit gets loud. Yeah. All oh, right. Yeah. Uh, I've heard cicadas. I don't know about you, the viewer, if you've heard it, but we're going to put it into a little bit of context for you. These sounds can get so loud that they've been recorded up to about 90 decibels. Yeah. And if, if you're wondering what that sounds like, that's somewhere between a vacuum and a leaf blower. That's right. Like that, I mean, a vacuum and a leaf blower. That's pretty fucking loud, man. Oh, yeah. Those are machines. I, I know both. Yeah. The leaf blower, uh, if you ever had to do childhood chores in Texas, uh, you probably had to cut the grass. Oh, yeah. Because we cut grass all the time in oh, Texas. Yeah. And I mean, there's, yeah, there's stories of like, it's the males. It's the males that have that use that make the sound, right? Right. So the females are attracted to the louder, the louder the sound, the more attracted they are to the uh, male species. So, when motherfuckers, there's stories of motherfuckers cutting their fucking lawn and just be fucking swarmed like the plague by cicadas just looking to fuck. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like, it, like that sort of level is what uh, cicada is ranging at. I mean, you want to get swarmed by females, but not in this context. Not, not cicadas. No, not female cicadas. No female bugs. No, no bugs. And you don't want to be cutting the grass anyway. So yeah. that, you But know. if you are... During cicada season, be careful. That's right. And be careful when you're blowing those leaves away, too, because they yep. might be coming for the leaf blower as well. Exactly. All right. Um, yeah, so those are little, that's a little bit of fun facts about the cicadas. Yeah. Um, it's a ti this is a timely topic. Yeah. You know, because the next time you'll at least be able to see the Brood X's will be in 2038. That's right. And I think, you know, this the Brood X is like the... The one, right? The one, the 17 year beast. Like the annual ones, like even here in Taiwan, like we have annual ones that you hear like when you're out and stuff, but nothing like the swarming, at least I used to get in the States. I mean, right. Fuck. Now, also, too, uh, there's tons of different types of species of cicadas. I think there's over 3,000 different species. So we're talking about the species in general. Um, a lot of this stuff varies. And on that topic, a lot of the stuff we're talking about today will vary on, uh, depending on the region of Earth and depending on which year the data was taken. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. So we're going to be moving on now to... We've talked about cicadas. We're going to be talking about the deadliest animals now. Um, real quick, before we talk about deadly animals, and we're talking about frequencies and animals, uh, some cool facts that we did find when we were researching, like, uh, different frequencies that uh, humans can hear and animals can hear. Yeah, we, we were just trying to figure out, yeah, what, what the range was with cicadas and shit like that. And now, yeah, we're kind of going with the hum and everything. We kind of got into this little... Yeah, and then Rabbit we found hole. this uh, fun fact. The if you had to guess, what would you say is the best hearing has the highest, the best hearing ability animal in the whole world? This kind of took us by surprise. Um, it was a moth. The moths are fucking stupid. Yeah, and they're so small, so you wouldn't really figure out that that would be the. Too bad moths can't fucking hear light. They'd be fucking geniuses. Exactly. Well, maybe that's what happened to them as a species. Yeah, they, they got all the hearing ability, exactly. and then Bring they... to the light. Yeah, exactly. You yeah. can't have it all, bro. No, you can't you know? have it all. Um, yeah, so moths can hear up to about 300,000 hertz. Okay, 300,000 hertz. Now, what they do is they, can, they have a bunch of different sensors. It is vibrational energy that they're picking up on, but um, it's not always just an actual sound you hear. They're picking up on different vibrations off of things. So, so what's a human, then? Humans can go from about, uh, humans are 23 to 64 hertz, more or less. Dogs can hear a little bit higher, up to about 67 hertz. So moths just blow us, blow us both out of the it's water. It's not even a competition. Yeah, exactly. Oh, good for moths, really, though. It's like Shizo uh, uh, from yesterday. Yeah, from yesterday. That dude, yeah, he just blows the competition. Exactly. That a boy. Bats, uh, we thought bats, we were looking into and we thought, hey, bats probably have the best hearing because that's kind of 
stereotypically what you hear with their sonar and the way they fly. Bats can register sounds up to about 200,000 kilohertz, uh, which is still 100,000 kilohertz under moss. Yeah. So when it comes to hearing and it won- when it comes to frequencies and uh, the abilities of animals, there's a little fun fact for you. Moths have the best hearing ability, 300,000 Kilohertz. Sounds like a trivia question you might be asked sometime later, right? That's right. So, little fun fact for uh, your friend that you're going to see later on today. Yep. All right, moving on. We got some more facts for you and your friends right now. This is going to be a fun topic. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, everybody likes this. There is a natural attraction and a natural draw as a human to something that can fuck you up and kill you, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's it why. Either, you either lay, you know, it either freaks you the fuck out or, you know, you love it. And yeah, you're right. Something that just genuinely draws you in regardless. Right. Now, you know, people are drawn into crime stories. People are drawn into great white shark attack stories. Yes, yeah, the same people, kind of shit. Exactly. People are drawn into uh, snake attacks and stuff like that. So um, we've narrowed it down. We got a list right now of the top 10 deadliest animals to humans. All yeah, right? and you know what? This is also a little bit of our... We put this together, right? So don't go on the fucking internet and be like, well, I saw this internet and this said this. Like, we put this together with doing research and what we thought was the best, uh, the best list. Well, and like I was saying earlier, some of this data varies year right. to year. So right. we have a range of, you know, you can't say snakes kill this many people a year because it changes every year. Exactly. Some years it's low, some exactly. years it's high. We have a range for you. That's why on some of these things, they do vary because... Uh, you know, there's a difference in how many they kill per year. There's also a difference, uh, the variance on how these people died and what the symptoms were. Exactly. So, for example, some of these things, uh, they'll bite you. They inject something into you. You don't die immediately. You die later on in the future. But because that animal did something to you, that's why you died. It's a direct correlation. But it's not like getting a crocodile that comes and I mean, when takes a, cro- a big when bite. A cro- yeah, you're dead. Yeah. You're dead. And speaking of crocs, they are the yeah. most deadly to humans, like straight up just human mortality. Like, yes, they are. I'm going to kill you. Crocs are the number one on humans. Yeah. They don't kill the most humans because you're going to see in our list, there's a lot more deadly animals out there. But when it comes to straight up attacks on humans, like I'm trying to kill you, crocs are the ones you got to be, wear- be wary of. And they're going to come in hot at number 10 in our list. Yep, they do come in hot at number 10. Not number one, crocs, they kill about 1,000 people per year, per year, more or less. Right. Um, it's not an animal that's worldwide. It's very regional. Um, they're all over the world, but a lot of people in their normal life don't have an encounter with a crocodile. I don't think I've... I've never seen a crocodile in the wild. I ha- Well, I've been traveling to Costa Rica. They got the caimans sure. down there, that small yeah. species of crocodile. So. Yeah, I've, I've never seen one in the wild. Right. So. Crocodiles, uh, obviously very similar, but different to alligators. We didn't look into alligator deaths, but alligator is something a little bit more common in the U.S. I think, I think crocodiles are more aggressive than alligators. Exactly. And I much, mean, we did a much, lot of research, and alligator never popped up on a list at yeah, all. So exactly. There's probably a reason for that. Um, you might be more familiar with alligators, but yeah, crocodiles, they have them in Australia. They got them in South Africa. They got them all over, but... Yep. Uh, they are number 10. Moving on, number 9 comes in at small little bugger, a tapeworm. Yeah. Okay? This is one that is uh, more of a problem in developing countries and stuff like that where sanitary issues are a problem. Um, they kill in the thousands of people, not too many thousands, you know, one to 2,000 a yeah, year. You but get that shit taken care of, I think you're right, okay. Yeah. They just kind of get in your system a yeah. few different ways, yeah. water, uh you know, contaminated water, uh, contaminated food, stuff like that. Right. So in places that you have, like, um, a lot more unsanitary conditions, you will be having tapeworms. You will also be having uh, some of what's number not number eight on our list, which is roundworms. Yep, okay? roundworms as well. Roundworms, tapeworms, so, almost the same, very same, similar. Same family of worm worms gross, that'll get inside gross, you. nasty diseases yeah you don't want to hear about fucking tapeworms and roundworms in your body and shit you don't want you don't want none of that no yeah. uh we thought my roommate in college had a tapeworm oh fuck shout out to my boy scott mitchell if you're watching you um, made it scott scotty boy you made it how's that thing doing buddy <laughs> yeah kept in a fucking jar or what well the guy could eat anything and he never gained an ab- a gram of fat 
Ah. You know, we could go on like this super grubby right. pizza binge with ranch sauce and triple cheese and da 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 barbecue beers all afternoon, whatever. And then he wakes up the next day and the guy looks skinnier. So the only thing we could figure out is he had a little tapeworm in there. Uh, well, yeah, there have been people who seriously had like. Seriously consider putting tapeworms in their body to lose weight. Right. Which is just, fuck, don't, I don't think you should be doing that. And these things get long. Yeah. They're disgusting. Yeah. That's, they're fucked up, man. So, yeah, they get in there. They basically are parasitic. They get into your stomach and intestines, eat up all the nutrition you're supposed to be getting. And if you don't have enough nutrition, they end up killing you over time, and they will get you. So, number nine, tapeworms. Number eight, round worms. Getting out of the worms category into something that Thank you might God. have heard of and might be a little bit more scared of. Coming in hot at number seven is scorpions. Oh, yeah, scorpions. All right. Yeah. I think most of you out there that are um, adults, you should know what a scorpion is. <laughs> they got those little tails that, bam, hit you, right? Yeah, I think they're, like, pretty common. And when people think of deadly animals, they think of scorpions because, you know, they fucking sting you and... Shit like that. Well, and the thing about scorpions, too, is they're small, and they get into these little tiny yeah. cracks and crevices yeah. that you don't know about, yeah. and so they get you unexpectedly. Yeah. Like, and if a croc's coming at you, you know, you're going to see unless it's underwater or, like, you know, a lion or something's coming at you, a bear's coming at you, a snake, you're going to see it. These scorpions, they're hiding in your shoe. They like little uh, right. cutty, dark places. So. Right. In little clothing drawers, inside shoes, inside yeah. little places where you stick your hands and stuff like yeah. that. And a lot of these animals, right, are more common in, uh, I guess, where scorpions are more common in, like, dry areas, exactly. right? Exactly. Deserts and shit like that. Exactly. So, you know. Yeah, and that uh, scorpion venom is toxic. So, one little hit of that, boom. Luckily, they have anti-venoms for most of them in most places. They're pretty common, right? Right, like, Exactly. Know. Yeah. But overall, scorpions yeah. do end up killing about 3,500 yeah. people a year. So not something to be too scared of. But uh, if you're out there, they can kill you. So watch out. Yeah. All right. Number six. Now, this is a kind of funky one. We didn't, we didn't really know where to put this one on the list because it was... Uh, it kind of seems like... Like you're just you could just be unlucky with these guys. Like you, you could just be walking in the, in the fucking lake and... You know, you just get shit on by a fucking freshwater snail and all of a sudden you're fucked. Exactly. So. Coming in at number six is freshwater snails. Yeah. All right. Now, these things, you must be thinking, what the hell? How does a snail kill you? Well, it's not the exact snail that's going to kill you. All right. What happens is these freshwater snails are in freshwater bodies of water. They lay their eggs. They lay these little parasitic worms yep. that get into the uh, water source. Yep. Right. Now, these are real tiny worms that can can penetrate your skin and get right into yeah, your without, body. Yeah, without you even really knowing, I think. Exactly. So you see this in a lot of developing countries, too, where you got, like, uh, kids that swim in more yeah. natural yeah. bodies of water, like a small little local pond or something like that. Um, did you just stagnant water that's got this sort of stuff. Yeah. Um, that sort of stuff gets into your body and starts to cause all sorts of problems. Yes. Now, what this does is it calls something called snail fever, which is also called schistosomiasis, okay? Schistosomiasis is nail fever. What it does is it basically gets into your blood, and over time, it'll kill you, all right? Uh, you'll start to develop symptoms, fever, uh, abdominal pain, things like that, and over time, it will kill you. Um, it's a parasite that goes into your blood, and it affects a lot of people, okay? Millions of people are uh, they get it a year we read a stat that says 250 million people a year will get this yeah now is it gonna kill all 250 no. million people no says it does kill maybe around uh 4, people a year no sorry not 4,000. kills about thirty-five thousand people a year um but hundreds of millions of people a year get this all right so if it is left untreated you don't do anything about it it can kill you over time yep all right so and the thing about that is they don't really know how to uh, calculate some of these things that do uh, cause a slow death to you because you get it at one time and then you die three weeks later. Who knows? Yeah, I mean, it's hard for them to directly... I mean, it's not like they're like, were you swimming in a freshwater source that has potentially been contaminated by stuff? Oh, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of other things that are more likely to happen to you right. than that. So, 
That's and, part of it, I think. And also, too, in a lot of these developing countries, they don't have a lot of the medical facilities right. to test this stuff. So right. if you're a young, you know, three, four-year-old child and you've got diarrhea and you've got, you know, things wrong with your body and you die, um, you know, it's just a thing. It's just a death. Yep. They don't go, oh, well, let's do an autopsy. Let's check all of his blood samples and stool samples and blah, blah, blah. So a lot of these things that uh, do happen, for example, with the uh, freshwater snails and with a few of the other things on our list, it just kind of gets into your body as a product of your environment that you live in and you have a slow death. And um, so we're not really sure on some of these numbers. We have freshwater snails in at number six. Number six. Some uh, some lists had them a little bit higher up, killing more people. But we like where they're at. Yep. Freshwater snails killing about 35,000 people a year with their slimy little... Slimy little intestinal worms. Yeah, so it feels it's just like the wrong place, the wrong time if you get that shit, man. Yep. Yeah, you're just unlucky. Jay Stevens, you ever had a uh, bug come give you a big fat kiss? No. No? No. Well, if you do, you better hope that it's not from this bug. Ooh. This is called the kissing bug, a.k.a. the assassin bug. No, sorry. It's called the assassin bug, a.k.a. The kissing bug. You got it. Why? This thing will come crawl up, and he likes to bite you right around your mouth, okay? Um, it's a nice, fun, slow, agonizing death <laughs> over the next few weeks. You don't really know what's happening to you. All you know is you're sick. All you know is you got something, and you can't cure it. Um, these things are found, I think, more in Africa. Um, but, yeah, it's called the assassin bug, kissing bug. They kill about 12,000 people a year. And um, they will fuck you up. Fuck you up. All right, getting into under top five. Getting into the fourth one right now. Um, this is one that, uh, another one you might not be aware of. Small little critter that will fuck you up. Um, you're only going to find it, luckily, in sub-Sahara Africa. Yep. This is something called the Setsi fly. The Setsi fly. You so Setsi. Ooh, Setsi fly. Ooh. Now, that's spelled T-S-E-T-S-E, -S -E, Tetsy. And they ain't sexy. They're not Tetsy, but they are Tetsy. Ooh. And you do not want these things anywhere near you, right? Nope. Um, they give you African sleeping sickness, okay? Now, with the kissing bugs, the assassin bugs, you're going to get hit with it. You die a few weeks later. It's a little bit slower process. With the uh, Tetsy fly, you get bit with it. You're going to probably die in your sleep within a few days, all right? It's a lot more toxic. Um, kills about 500,000 people a year. A half a million people a year die of this thing. Okay? Yeah. 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 It's a real thing. So it's one of those things that, you know, I used to live in the Philippines. A lot more mosquitoes there. And you realize these little insects and stuff, they'll get into your house. Fuck okay? yeah, dude. They're going to creep in. A lot of Western homes, you know, you don't have this problem. But a lot of these uh, homes in developing countries, yeah. it's very easy for insects and critters to get into your house. What happens is you go to sleep for the night and that little mosquito flies in or that little tetsy fly flies in, <laughs> gets you while you're sleeping. You don't even know about it. Right. Okay. So yeah, that's no good. Tetsy flies coming in hot at number four. All right. Number three. Uh, I know all of you know this animal. Yep. And you probably don't think of it as a killer. I have one myself. Yep. And you probably have one at your house, too. And if you are thinking the word D-O-G, dog, you are correct. Yes, you are. That's right. Number three on our list, Jay Stevens, is dog. Dog. The dog. What kind of dog you got? I have a corgi. A corgi. He the man. Oh, yeah, little Yoshi. Yoshi the man. He's cool. He's yeah, cool. Yeah, he's cool. Um, yeah, I've had dogs growing up uh, throughout my life, more like mutt mixes. But, yeah. uh None of them ever tried to kill my ass. Me neither. Yoshi ever tried to kill your Fuck ass? no, dude. All right. Well, I think a lot of people associate pit bulls and stuff like that in the West with a mean dog. Yeah. Actually, pit bulls are trained to be aggressive like that. Yeah. If you meet a pit bull that's been uh, trained by its owner from uh, childhood to be uh, nice and you know friendly, yeah. they're nice and friendly dogs. And it's like that with anything. You train something to be aggressive and mean, it's going to be that way. You train it to be nice and friendly, it's got a better chance of being nice and friendly. Yeah, and I think with the dogs, like I think... A you know, a portion of it is attacks, but I think a lot of it's rabies and shit like that. It is. Yeah, it and, is. You know, again, and like a lot of this stuff is in underdeveloped countries and shit. Like, you know, there are others where we live in Taiwan. I think it's a rabies free country. Oh, really? Yeah, the entire country. There's no rabies. They round up all the strays, everything. There's no rabies here because I think they had a really big problem 
you know, years and years ago. Right. And now there's none. Exactly. He's exactly right about that. It is a rabies thing. Yeah. Um, you got people in countries that do get bit by dogs and they have rabies. Uh, according to the WHO, 99% of the rabies cases reported are from dogs. Yeah. So you probably thought it was from bats or yeah. some shit like that. All these other animals you hear about, like, be careful of this. It's got rabies. Um, if you're old enough to know the movie Old Yeller. Yeah, Old Yeller. Old oh. Yeller. He got rabies at the oh, end. That and, was um, just a, that's just sad. That's a little case right there. When dogs get rabies, uh, you do not want to be anywhere near them. And nah. they... If they give you the rabies, you can die as well. Yep. Uh, dogs kill about 25,000 to 30,000 people a year, more or less. Um, mostly rabies, but yes, some are dog attacks, all right? Yep. All right. Getting down to our top two. Top two. Top now, two. Top two, you're probably going to guess one of these, and the other one, once we tell you, you're going to probably be like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Duh. Number two, it's an animal that I'm sure a lot of you are scared of. Um, snakes. Yeah, I think snakes is high, like super high on the phobia list. I think number number two, three. Yeah, spiders and snakes are both up there, coming in hot. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, I think it's very safe to say snakes is one of those animals that most people would love to live their entire life and never have an encounter with a snake. Well, I mean, I wouldn't. I'm not really afraid of snakes. But I could definitely go my entire life without seeing one to be perfectly fine. Right, exactly. You know. Well, and a lot of people, too, uh, it's just the mental yeah. in, mental thought of a snake. You're yeah. going, oh, shit, it's a snake. And yeah. it's like, well, pff, you're this big. The snake's this big. Like, that snake sees you. He's trying to get out of there. Oh, yeah. All right? But, uh, you know, they are still dangerous. And what happens more is, you know, it's people... Um, like I said, snakes are hiding, they're burrowing under things, under beds and boxes and stuff. You got humans that don't even know they're there, unassuming, go into reach and they get bitten, something like that. The snake is there to defend itself. It feels threatened. There's not a lot of snakes out there that are really out to get most, people. Most snakes, yeah, are not aggressive. No. Like if you read like a lot of, the, most of the dangerous snakes are not aggressive. Right. Except the saw-scaled viper. And that dude... Is aggressive and will fuck you up. Oh yeah, he, he is, is the most. He's the most dangerous snake and accounts for like more than half of all. No, no, no. Animals. He accounts for more deaths by a snake than all the other snakes right. combined. Yeah, more. Yeah, more. More deaths by a snake than all other snakes. Exactly. Combined. Correct. Exactly. That's yeah. the saw saw scaled, scaled viper. viper. Okay. Yeah. Um, where are those from? I'm not sure. If you uh, have any info on a yeah, saw scaled let, viper, let us, let us know. Yep, let us know down in the comments. If um, I had to make a guess, I would say Australia. Yep, or Africa. Yep, Africa, a Africa or Australia. I yep. mean, I think Australia. I mean, if you're if you're scared of dangerous animals, don't go to Australia. Yep. Now with snakes, um, we got some who data on that as well. There's about 4.5 to 5.4 million snake bites a year. Mm -hmm. Okay, now out of that, you got about 1.8 to 2.7 million that develop some sort of illness out of that. Right. right. So a lot of snake bites, they get bitten. People go check them out, go to the hospital. Nothing happens. Now, you do have a lot of instances, um, about a third to half of them, where something does happen to the person, right? right. A venomous snake. And um, out of all of those, out of the... Five million bites, more or less. You're gonna have about eighty-one thousand to one hundred and forty thousand deaths a year. Yeah. Okay. So. And that seems like we're doing a pretty good job keeping it under wraps. Yeah, I mean, if you look at that as a statistical figure, five million divided by eighty thousand, it's not really a number. At yeah, all. and depending on you know a lot of this shit's probably you know you're out hiking and you know you're fucking on a twelve-hour hike and you get bit by a snake, you're fucked. Exactly. I mean, yeah, you're we, fucked. Yeah, we have a lot of snake venom at this point, and we can help people yes. if you have it. But yeah. like you said, if you don't have it, you're fucked. You are F U C T. Yes. All right. Number one coming in hot. Um, it's going to be a no brainer when you hear it because it just takes the cake on all of the deaths. By a pretty, pretty good margin. Yeah, it's almost like basically if you add up the rest of our list yeah. and take that number, you're still. Lower than the number one. Yep. Number one coming at you, mosquitoes. Fuck mosquitoes, man. Fuck mosquitoes, exactly. 
We had a, uh, when we got this studio at first, uh, we had this crazy mosquito problem here. Infestation. It was insane. But, but we fucking, we, we handled it. Yeah, we came out on we, top. We did you come know? out on top. Uh, tw- uh, what was it? 2,100 mosquitoes later that we killed? Jeez. Dude. Oh my God. It was, it was like. We couldn't, you, we couldn't. You mosquito couldn't getting up in here. It was. All right, luckily we survived that. Yes, we did. We didn't get any of the dengue. We, no, didn't, we didn't get any of the malaria. We didn't get Zika. We didn't get any yellow fever. None of this. We survived. But unfortunately, there are about um, half a million to a million people that do die a year from mosquito-related bites. Well, now, I mean, like they're like dengue and uh, malaria are common in cer- like super common in cer- certain places, right? Like I went to Africa. Back in, you know, 2011. And, you know, you got to get, you got to take malaria pills. You got to get ready because, you know, a lot of mosquitoes in Africa have malaria. Right. And um, it's not just malaria. There is a whole range of um, mosquito-borne illnesses that kill people. Uh, We got a list of them for you. Basically, mosquitoes carry around these diseases that will kill people if left untreated. You have malaria. Yep. You have dengue fever. Yep. You have yellow fever. Yep. You have the West Nile virus. You have encephalitis. Uh, Encephalitis is broken up into a few things. You got Eastern encephalitis, Western encephalitis, and equine encephalitis. Those are three different categories. You also have the Zika virus that is uh, mosquito-borne. Yeah, I mean, my, uh, my fiance's dad lives in Cambodia. She has two sisters and his girlfriend... And uh, three of the four of them have all had dengue. Oh, damn. Yeah. And, I mean, they've, they're fine. They right. survived. You know, if you, go, if you get dengue and you go to a hospital, you know, they're gonna, they'll treat you and you'll be fine. But, you know, it's, again, it's kind of the situation where if you're in a place like, you know, if you're in rural Cambodia, something like that, you can't get somewhere in time, you know, you're fucked. Exactly. And, you know, we, we do a lot of traveling through, like, he lived in the Philippines and you go to Thailand and stuff like that. You go to different hostels. And there'll be signs that say, you know, dengue, dengue fever area. Like, oh, yeah. Not that you're going to get bit, but like, you know, put on your fucking bug spray, you know, just, you know, like a disclaimer, like there's dengue in this area. So oh, yeah. figure it out. Yeah, and exactly. Um, like I said, they'll get you while you're sleeping. That's when they get you. You know, if you're aware of it, like anybody, you kind of know when a mosquito's biting you more or less. You don't know when you're sleeping. Um I knew a lot of people when I lived in the Philippines that had dengue. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It's not it's fun. Co- I, I think it's common. It's yeah, common. L- luckily I didn't never had it. Um, I know you're just sick as a dog for anywhere you're like from dehi- like... You're dehydrated, right? You yeah, gotta, mul- gotta, yeah pump, pump fluids into your body and shit. Yeah, oh yeah, they say yeah. you feel like you want to die. Yeah. So that small little mosquito can fuck your ass up. Yeah, and, and that's not even... Yeah, that's just the dust, but fucking mosquito bites just fucking bugging the shit out of you. That's right. They're the worst. Yeah. Well, um, <laughs> if you agree with us, go ahead and drop a comment down there. Let us know. Also, if you've had any crazy experiences with any of these animals that almost killed you, let us know. We might come back to that uh, in a future episode and talk about it. Um, also, too, if you have any content you'd like to share with the show, drop it down there. Let us know. Hit us up on our social media, and uh, we'll see if we can get some of that info in one of our future episodes yep. for you. Yep, yep, yep. All right. I got this little fun thing for you, for those of you watching out there. Um, let's see if you can time how long this takes. Looking at it, how long would you think this is going to take? I have Jay no idea. Like, I don't know, man. I mean, does it look like an hourglass? Doesn't yeah. look that big, huh? No, it doesn't look it's gonna that It's going to do big. something less than an hour. You know, you yeah. would think it's like maybe a half hour glass or maybe a 15 minute hour glass. Yeah. No, no, it's uh, it's, it's is some it an hourglass. We- no, it's some weird number. We're going to flip it over right now. Do you now. know it? I know it. I've timed it. So we're just going to run it back in this episode. Uh, you watch all right, and see. All right, all right, all right. I got a number. All right. Okay, yeah. JC. I got a number. I'm going to go with 17 minutes. Right on the dot? 17 minutes. All right, 17 minutes. Oh, no, okay. So, all right. So it's obviously not right on the dot. So no, I'm just asking. Well, no, but no, but no, it's not clarification. So you're telling me that it's not right on the dot. Seven, all right. 17 minutes. That's my business partner. He's a smart one. 17 minutes in 13. 17 seconds. 17 minutes, 13 seconds. You, the viewer out there, lock a time into your head. You think this uh, mysterious hour, well, this mysterious time glass is going to do. And uh, we're going to time it starting one, two, three now. All right, we're going to see when that thing finishes up. And by the time it finishes up, that's about when the episode's going to be over. So 
We're going to move on. Those are the top 10 deadliest. Um, we also had a few honorable mentions. When we put this list together, we had to put it into a category of like, these animals kill the most amount of humans, all right? Yeah. Now, there's another category of most deadliest animals, meaning like how toxic they are, uh, your chance of dying if you get hit with one of these yeah, animals. Yeah, we'll, we'll get into, we'll, we'll break it down further. That's a separate episode. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll break it down further. That's things know. like stonefish. Yeah, stonefish. Uh, box jellyfish. Yeah, stonefish is the deadliest fish. Deadliest fish, that's all. And I think the box jellyfish is one of the deadliest animals also in the world. But they just don't kill that many people because, right? you know. They got uh, different toxicity yeah. levels yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah, we got a whole list for you. We're that, getting so. into that in a future episode. Don't yeah. you worry because we already did some research on yes, it. Yes, we did. All right. Um, moving on. Let me look at my little list back here. Deadliest animals. Check. Last one on the list before we end this episode and get into our episode wind down is a fun, weird one. This one's called hybrids. Hybrids, human hybrids, animal hybrids. And for you, for those of you watching, you see down here on the back of my board, it says episode two, the human Z episode. All right, we're going to be talking right now about some human hybrid type things, okay? Now, ones that the humans have been trying to do, and we love both of these words, so it's kind of hard to choose. You got chimp man Z. Yep. Chimp man Z. Yep. Or you have human Z. Yep. We like human Z, so this one's called the human Z episode. Yes, it is. Now, when it comes to human Zs, who are they? What are they? Where did they come from? And do we have them? Well, let's look into it. Um, human hybrid, what the hell is going on? Now, I know a lot of you have heard about this. It's been a thing in our lifetime. Uh, cloning has been a thing. Uh, genetics, cracking the genome, all this stuff. We are living in an era where we are all about the genetics and we're learning how to manipulate genes and create things. So, um, it's finally getting to the real point, though. It's been around for about a century, though, okay? Um, we're going to talk specifically about some human hybrid experimentation. Um, in our research, we found lots of experimentation going on. Humans and animals, animals with animals, plants versus animals, all sorts of stuff. Plants versus zombies. Mm -hmm. All right, so um, we're talking specifically here mostly about the human hybrid and where we're going with that, all right? Yep. Um, back in 1910... There was the World Congress of Zoologists. Now, they had talked about this idea of a human Z, right? They were getting at that point where they were doing some genetic testing on things. This was, you know, a little over 100 years ago. And they were like, you know what? Apes and humans, they only lack one chromosome. We're almost there. We like, can do it. This should be a way that we could maybe, like, mix and match these genes and right. come up with something. Right. So they kind of had the idea back in the day. Took them about another decade later. In the 1920s, you had a Russian scientist called uh, Ilya Ivanovich Ivanov. Mm. Okay? So I, I, I know that Ilya. guy. I know that guy. You know him? I know that guy. Oh, yeah. yeah. You guys used to go to school or what? We used to drink beers together. Oh, shit. Of course, Jay Stevens was drinking beer with old Ilya. Oh, Ia. yeah. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Ilya, back in the day, back in the 1920s, he said, uh, you know what? Let's give this thing a go. Let's try to mix them uh, together. So he was extracting uh, eggs from humans, so extracting sperm from humans, doing the same thing from the primates, from the uh, chimps. And first of all, he tried with the human male sperm into the female chimp egg, okay, right. the uh, female egg. So that didn't work, and then he flipped it around. He tried that. That was a little bit more controversial, though, right? Yes. Because now you have a human woman... Giving birth to a half human, half monkey child. In theory, that's what was going on. So that was kind of the um, dilemma behind that, the ethics dilemma. So he didn't have any success with either one of these, all right? He didn't really have it back then. That was 100 years ago in the 1920s, all right? Um, since then, we have been doing lots of stuff. In 2019, a Spanish scientist operating out of China... He put together a chimp-human hybrid. Yep. Got it to the 14-day incubation period, 
and then they had to kill it. Yeah. Okay, so science ethical laws right now say you can fertilize an egg, you can get it to a certain point in the embryo, and then you have to kill it, okay? Right. But And that's not, that's I think that's like only in China. Yeah. That's why he's, a lot, a lot of these scientists and this guy specifically that Zuki's talking about is, that, that's why they're in China. Exactly. Because they can do these sort of things there because it's China. You know, other places, like the States, for example, doesn't allow this shit now, so. And so we're walking a very slippery slope yeah, with that. Yeah. All the responsible Western countries and responsible countries of the world that say, hey, ye, we don't want to be playing God and doing this. This is not ethical. We're not doing it. Yeah. Well, all that's doing is chasing all the scientists to China. China's going, hey, you want to do your little pop-up experiment over here? Cool, yeah. we're down. So exactly. all you're doing, all we've created now is... All the responsible experimentation has now gone underground and it's moved to China. So we're not really sure what the hell is happening over there. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we know. Yeah. But what we do know and what is on record is they have gotten these embryos to certain points along the uh, development process and then they've just killed them. Okay. Right. They've exterminated them and they're no more. But that raises the question. Did they kill all of them, though? I mean, let's get serious. If you have the means and the technology to get it to a certain point, and you're doing it on the underground, and you're doing it to see if it can be done, there has to have been a point somewhere that this group of scientists said, right. hey, we got it to this point. We spent all this time and effort. Do we really want to kill it I mean, after you're 14 already, days? Yeah, you're already doing it somewhat illegally or, like, maybe immorally to you, and you're going to China to do it. Right. And then, like, you're already that far. Like, yeah, I mean, who knows? So, we think right here at the Weird Sauce Company that a uh, few of these mad scientists have taken some of these eggs in the back room and uh, kept those things going. Um, let us know what you think down in the comments. If you think we've actually successfully made human... Chimpanzee hybrids, human Zs. Um, I think they're out there. We've done a lot of experimenting, experimentation actually with animals and humans. Right. Okay. Now the chimp and the humans, that was like the holy grail. Yeah. We were going for the, the home run, the grand slam, like this is a new creature. Now, there's a whole category in the middle that doesn't involve going for the big grand slam. It involves just taking little bites, getting a little piece here, a little piece there. For example... Uh, taking human brain cells and putting them in the genome of pigs and yep. putting them in uh, different animals to uh, harvest organs from them. Uh, yeah, I mean, that's the uh, pigs and sheep they were talking about doing that with. And, uh, I mean, that's basically, I mean, that's just fucking weird, man. Like, I can see how, in the grand scheme of things, the idea is, isn't bad, right? So, like, at the end game, they're trying to harvest, they're trying to grow... Um, human organs and pigs and sheep so that if you need a fucking kidney transplant or whatever the fuck you need, you get out of a pig. Then on the other hand, you know, you're at the fucking doctor and they're like, Hey, you know, this is the pig that's going to be giving you the fucking kidney transplant. Like, exactly. I mean, how do you feel about that? I mean, I, I, you know, if it's safe and okay, then okay. But you know, yeah, it's just a weird, it is, it's weird. It's a weird concept. It's a weird in general. concept. But it does sound it, like the. I think the end idea is okay. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, if you could have all of these uh, organs that humans need, and technically they're growing in animals that you don't yeah, have but to. Fucking PETA got to be pissed, man. Oh yeah. You know, pet activists probably not too happy about that shit. Well, that's one of those things, though. It's like animal or human, you know? Right. It's, it's kind of one of those things. Unless, you know, we got a plethora of all these organs laying around and we don't have to kill the animals, but... Uh, but we don't have that. We don't have that. So, yeah, when people do have uh, these organ failure and stuff, if they do need a donor, yeah. it, would it be pretty cool if you could say, it hey, would. there's a company just right on the next state over. They have 12 different types of animals. They have 22 different types of organs. Right. They're already ready to go. When someone gets in a car accident and say, hey, this guy needs this uh, body part right now, yeah. boom. They Within an hour, they have it from a living creature right into your body, nice and healthy. They've monitored it. You don't have to worry about a human like, oh, my kidney's failing. Well, give me your kidney. Well, uh, I've been drinking my whole life. Uh, my kidney's not too good either, you know? Uh, right, right, right. So, you know. Yeah, I, yeah, like, yeah. I think the end game of it sounds 
Sounds like a good idea. I it sounds just, cool. Sounds promising. It does sound promising. There were some other people that have done some experiments on trying to make some hybrid stuff go on. Some of our favorites are, uh, well, my favorite and the top one that I've heard of is mixing spider silk with goat milk. Yep. Okay. Silky milk. This app, right? Yeah, this Silk happened. milk. This, this is a real thing, all right? There's two of them, I think. Yeah, basic, basically, they were able to take the uh, the DNA from the spider that makes the silk, embed it into the goat DNA, so the goat makes the milk that's got the spider silk DNA in it, so when it makes the milk, it's got that silky... Yeah, it was like a thick, silky... Film in it. Yeah, exactly. So you get the milk from the goat, and then you dehydrate all the... Evaporate, dehydrate all the uh, milk out of it, right. and you're left with the... Uh, Spider silk. Yep. Now, why do people give a shit about that? Well, spider silk, some of the strongest stuff in the world. Yep. You know, and it's super, super lightweight. It's super strong. The problem is we can only harvest it from spiders. So if we had a different way of harvesting it, we could have this amazing uh, material and we could use it for humans. A real life Spider-Man. That's right. Oh, my God. Spider goat. Spider goat. Who's the goat? Who's the goat the of all spider, spider goats? Dope. Goat. So. Spider goats. All right. Hey, uh, if you want to get us a Christmas gift here at the Weird Sauce uh, <laughs> Sauce Lab, we are accepting uh, spike spider goats. Spider goats, yeah. Yeah, spider goats. We'll take one. All right. Well, we are winding down. Do we have anything else, Jay Stevens, that you want to throw out there? I think we pretty much nailed it. Yes, we did. Well, we nailed it. You know, it's that time of the uh, episode where we kind of do our episode wind down. Yes, sir. All right. So if it's your first episode watching with us, our episode wind down, we got word of the day for you. We're going to have our membership dice roll, our very first one. Yes, sir. And we're going to have our shout outs of the day. Yep. All right. Uh, Jay Stevens, what you got for the people over there, bro? All right. Today, I got flap doodle. Which just means nonsense, all right? So, like, in context, my boy Zuki was talking this morning. He's like, man, he's a Houston Texans fan. He's like, man, they're going to be so fucking good this year. I said, watch your mouth, boy. That's a fucking flap doodle. No, you came in on the conversation wrong. The flap doodle is when I was talking about the Bears. I said, uh, the Chicago Bears are going <laughs> to do good this year. <laughs> Shout out and Justin that, Fields. Don't listen to him, boy. And that was when all the flap doodle lead, yeah, McDoodle doodle flat, doodle came out of my mouth. flap doodle, dog. All right, bro. All right. All right. You stop flap doodling <laughs> over there. All right. We got another F word for you. Um, Going to be your third favorite F word. Yes, sir. Right here. My word of the day is a uh, foofarol. A foofarol? Yep. <laughs> you know what a foofarol is? I don't. A foofarol is when you make a big stink and you complain and you make a, a situation over something that is nothing. Just something small. Yeah, some... In insignificant matter, you make a big stink over. So, for example, um, let's say someone brought their umbrella into your house and they forgot to uh, fasten up the umbrella when they yeah, put it by your door. everywhere. And you said, what the hell are you doing? And you said, what? He's like, you didn't snap the umbrella. And you're like, yeah, I know, but what do you mean? Like, it, you got you to gotta snap the umbrella, dude. If you don't snap the umbrella, it's going to get water all over my house. And you're like, bro. You are pulling a foofarol. Stop causing such a foofarol, boy. Shut your you mouth, shut your boy. Mouth. <laughs> My umbrella ain't dripping all yeah. over your house. You're making a big deal over nothing. Yep. That, yep. So, yep. there's your two words of the day. Foofarol, flap doodle. Right now, we're going to give our shout. Right now, we're going to do our dice roll. Yep. All right, we're going to cut over there. Do the membership dice roll. Good luck if you're in that. If not, don't forget... All you have to do is hit us up with a message on our Instagram. Hit us up on our Twitter. Put it in the comments on the video, whatever whatever you got. Yes, we'll we get need you to, in there. We need to have a way to contact you, and we need you to pick a number between 99,999. That's your exclusive membership number. Mail it to us. We're going to put you on our system, and you are entered in every single day. Yep. So for you, those of you that have already entered and we got you in our system, Here's our dice roll right here. Good luck, everybody. All right, everyone. Here's our first ever membership dice roll. Good luck, everyone. The number is 90. 3,247. 
93,247, you are a winner. That's going to wrap it up for us here. But before we do, we want to give a couple shout outs um, mm -hmm. as we do every day. Um, since we're just starting out, we're kind of getting shout outs to all of the most important people in our life. Um, so today I want to give a shout out to all my old school crew in the house, man. All the homies that I grew up with, with high, from high school that I'm still in touch with. I've been friends with some of these guys for over 30 years, almost 40 years, some of them, and uh, a lot of them 20 years plus. So big shout out to my crew back home, my boy Wally, my boy Fob, my boy Luker, Erickson, Bobo, Visage, Stash, uh, my boy Ben Perry, Bun P, uh, my boy Coy Elliott, and all of your ladies, all your wives, all your beautiful children, shout out to the crew. Crew down, baby. Love you all. Beauty, beauty, beauty. Yeah, and I'm here to give a shout out to my Taipei fam, man. Uh, yeah, Zuki and I live out in Taipei, so uh, we have a, you know, a little family here, so I'd like to give a shout out to Cam, Nevin, uh, Zach Zine, uh, Pete, Tom, Landon, Keith Snow, Todd, Uppity, all those boys, everyone in that chat, you know who you are. Uh, thanks for making Taipei feel like home. And uh, yeah, it's a shout out for you guys. All right, fam, that's going to wrap it up for episode two. Thanks for being with us. We'll see you tomorrow. Weird Sauce, we out. Peace. Later.